By the time most of you see this video, I'm guessing that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin will have already killed voting rights legislation for a second time this month. Now, they'll kill voting rights legislation, but simultaneously maintain that they definitely support voting rights legislation. Is that so? Well, let's let's see the way that Democrats tried to actually get them to go along with voting rights while maintaining the filibuster as much as possible. So Democratic Party officials proposed meeting them halfway by specifically carving out an exception to the filibuster, keeping it intact, but just carving out an exception when it comes to voting rights. Manchin and Sinema both rejected that. So then Democratic Party leadership proposed keeping the filibuster entirely and letting Republicans block legislation, but the catch is it returns to, which, uh, to its original form where you actually have to talk if you want to obstruct the legislation. Guess what? Manchin and Cinema objected to that as well, but yet they support voting rights legislation. It's comical. Now, to pour salt in the wounds, Joe Manchin knows that he's aggravating people and he literally went out of his way to taunt people who are angry with his unwillingness to support voting rights legislation. He says, I've been primaried my entire life. That would not be anything new for me. Bring it on, Manchin told reporters, asked about some of his colleagues not ruling out supporting a primary opponent. Quote, the majority of my colleagues in the Democratic caucus have changed their minds. I respect that. They have a right to change their minds. I haven't. I hope they respect that, too. I've never changed my mind on the filibuster, Manchin told reporters. Now, first and foremost, he's lying because on his own website, he stated that he supports changing the filibuster sooner rather than later. And second of all, for him to essentially taunt people by saying, you know that there's nothing you can do. You can try to primary me, bring it on, but you know I'm going to win that. And you know that I don't care because if I am successfully primaried, I'll just go become a lobbyist. He knows that there is nothing you can do, and he's throwing that in your face. It's just truly despicable. And let me remind you that we're not even talking about getting rid of the filibuster. We're just talking about reverting it back to its original form. So he's getting what he wants, technically. But still, he does not support that. He doesn't support the talking filibuster. But here's what he says about that. Manchin told reporters that I love a talking filibuster, but reiterated that he wouldn't support getting rid of the supermajority requirement. So he refuses to even entertain the idea of modifying the filibuster or reverting it back to its original form where you had to talk to obstruct the legislation. It's truly absurd. And simultaneously, he's taunting people, saying, go ahead, primary me. I dare you. We'll see how that turns out. Either way, I win. It's truly ridiculous. And, and just to really show you how unreasonable he's being, Amy Klobuchar, of all people, made a really solid point about the history of the filibuster and how it's been changed throughout time to make exceptions for certain pieces of legislation. Here are some examples of how the cloture rule has changed over time. In 1949, cloture was extended to cover all issues pending before the Senate, not just bills. In 1975, the vote threshold for cloture was reduced to three-fifths of all senators. In 1979, total post-cloture debate was limited to 100 hours, and then it was limited again to 30 hours in 1986. And in the past decade, the cloture rule has been further reduced for various kinds of nominees, most recently, by our Republican colleagues across the aisle. This isn't something from 100 years ago. This isn't something from before we had cars and people were arriving here on horseback. This just happened. In addition to changes to the cloture rule itself, the Senate has put in place exceptions to the rule. In fact, over time, the Senate has established over 160 processes in statute that allow a final vote with, without requiring 60 votes for cloture to end debate. In other words, you get to a vote without the 60 votes. As a result, we have expedited procedures, including, get this, reconciliation to spend to pass spending and tax legislation, the Congressional Review Act to block regulations, disapproval of arms sales. I guess someone decided that was okay to do for less than 60 votes. Even approving compensation plans for commercial space accidents doesn't require 60 votes, my friends. But while the 60 vote threshold was carved up 160 times so senators could pass things like tax cuts under President Trump, block regulations and confirm Supreme Court justices, when it comes to voting rights, we are told that traditions and comedy means that we should hug it tight, this old rule, throw voters under the Senate desk, 
and go home. And I hate to say it, but Amy Klobuchar is right. Almost threw up saying that. And look, if somebody as milk toast and corporatist as Amy Klobuchar can make another Democrat look unreasonable, then you know that that Democrat, Joe Manchin, is out of line. So he's not going to budge. He's made that abundantly clear. He's not going to allow voting rights to pass. Period. End of story. It's not really about the filibuster. It is about voting rights. He supports voter suppression. He supports the demise of democracy because Joe Manchin is not a Democrat. Joe Manchin is a Republican. He is as extreme as the voter suppression Republicans in states like Georgia. He is as extreme as Mitch McConnell. But the only difference is that he has a D in front of his name. So what do we do now? Well, now it is incumbent on Joe Biden and Democratic Party leadership to break Joe Manchin. And there is a plethora of things that they can do, a plethora of different tools they can use to exert pressure on him. As Nina Turner pointed out on Twitter, why is Joe Manchin still the chairman of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee? Time to stop playing games with these folks. Take his power. Exactly. Disempower him because he's in that position, which is beneficial to his corporate donors. It's nice that he has this role. So if you take away his power, then what's that going to do? That is going to threaten his position. That is going to at least make him acknowledge that this is serious and maybe I should reconsider. But you can do other things. As Walker Bragman suggests, take Manchin into a back room. Tell him federal investigators are going to look into his daughter's price fixing. Tell him the military bases are moving out of West Virginia. Tell him he's off his committees or he can play ball. So there's also that. Or maybe Joe Biden uses his bully pulpit to exert pressure on Joe Manchin by calling on everyone throughout the country to protest in front of his offices and do not leave until Manchin supports voting rights. There's that. And also on top of that, maybe Biden tells Joe Manchin that he's going to re-examine the position that he gave to Joe Manchin's wife, Gail. Maybe he finds someone else for that job. Maybe he fires her. Maybe we have Amy Klobuchar literally throw a fucking stapler at his face. I don't know. I'm not advocating for violence, but that's what Amy Klobuchar has been known to do. Uh, or a binder. Something. I mean, there are different things that you can do to exert pressure on Joe Manchin. Now, I acknowledge that none of these strategies are guaranteed to work. But the point is that now we know where Manchin stands unquestionably. He's not going to budge. He is an obstacle to voting rights. So now the onus is on Joe Biden, the president of the United States, to push, to exert pressure. No signaling that you're going to roll over and die. No saying, I don't know if we can get this done. No, you are the president of the United States. You reassure people that you are going to get this done because not getting voting rights accomplished is not an option because if we don't get this done, democracy in the United States erodes even further and it's already hanging on by a thread. So now it's on Joe Biden. Actually fight, actually step up and meet this moment and at a minimum accomplish voting rights. But Joe Biden doesn't want to fight. He's kind of just given up. I mean, there are things that he can do outside of voting rights to really improve the lives of the American people. Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema aren't keeping Joe Biden from canceling student debt. He can do that with a stroke of a pen, but Joe Biden is choosing not to do that because he doesn't support it. So really, I think that more pressure has to be exerted on Joe Biden to then exert pressure on Joe Manchin. But I think that Joe Biden likes that Manchin and Cinema are kind of his scapegoats. Perhaps he doesn't feel as strongly about voting rights as he says he does. I have no way of proving this, but his actions indicate that he's not taking this seriously. So there are a plethora of things that you can do, a number of ways that you can exert pressure on Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. If this doesn't get accomplished, then at the end of the day, yes, we blame Manchin and Cinema, but we also, and more importantly, mostly blame Joe Biden for not putting up a fight when it comes to one of the most important issues facing the American public, democracy itself. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.